Hi you guys, it's Tanya and today I want to share with you a mixed media layout featuring products from Lemore Weber Designs. Today I'm going to use her new stamps from Indigo Blue. These are Lemore Circles. I'm going to use the large script circle. And I'm also going to use her new set called the Rugged Edge. And the, I'm going to use the one that looks like stitching today in today's layout. I'm also going to use the Lindy Stamp Gang Flat Fabios and Embossing Powders for the Tray Chic and the Under the Boardwalk collections, both designed by Lee Moore Weber. I'm also going to use the, the Crafters Workshop 6x6 Stencils Mini Harlequin and Mini Gothic Romance. So I'm going to start with the Harlequin uh, stencil and the Flat Fabio. This is the Pop Rock Purple. And I'm going to add some splotches of this purple just around the layout and I'm, I'm going to keep to somewhat of a cross pattern. Um, I'm not being super careful with this because I do want it to be random and I am making sure that some of these Harlequins are not completely covered. I'm also going to use the Tilt-A-Wheel Teal that is also from the On the Boardwalk collection. And again, I'm just going to randomly place those around the purple. I love the contrast of the teal with the purple. They complement each other very well. And I really wanted these to be my dominant colors in my layout today. So I'm, I'm again, just haphazardly adding these. For those of you who have followed me for a while, you know that I typically struggle with white space. So I'm trying very hard with this layout to stay out of that lower left hand region. Now I am splashing some of the Bonjour Butter from the Tray Chic collection. Um, the thing about the Lindy Stamp Gang, these flat Fabios, that means that there is no shimmer in these. These are just straight up color, which I really love. And then I've also splattered a few um, splashes of the Chateau Rose from the Tray Chic collection. This is how I store my stencils. I place them into one of these six by six uh, photo albums. I really love this storage system and I wanted to share it with you guys. So I'm pulling out the Crafters Workshop Mini Gothic Romance and now I'm going to take some of the Faber-Castell Design Memory Craft Whip Spackle and just apply a thin coat of that on a diagonal across uh, the, the, the cross section of my pattern in the background. Now I noticed that there's like this lattice shape on the stencil, so I also added a few uh, pieces of that with the with the whip spackle, so that it would give a little bit of a texture and it still maintained that Harlequin look. I really love this uh, stencil because there's so many different images on it that it makes it a really nice value for your money. Uh, I typically buy 6x6 six six stencils when I'm purchasing them just because I like the way they store into that little notebook and uh, I, I find that the smaller shapes work better with my cards and my uh, tags and layouts. But that's just a personal preference. Any size stencil would work. The images are just typically a little larger on the on the larger stencils. Now you do want to make sure you're clearing your cleaning your stencils really well after using the whip spackle. Uh, so you saw me clean it up with a baby wipe. Now I am taking the Chateau Rose uh, Trace Chic collection of the Lindy Stamp Gang embossing powder and I'm applying it over the top of the whipped spackle. I have not dried the whipped spackle. It is still very wet. Uh, so it's going to serve as the adhesive for my embossing powder. When I heat emboss this whipped spackle, it's going to blister and um, bubble up and that's going to give my heart a really nice texture. And I love the soft pink, but the pink has a really nice pearlescent uh, pigment in it as well. So it's it's shiny, but it's uh, it's still really soft and feminine. So again, I'm going to just do that, repeat that with the heart that's there at the top. Now I'm applying a very liberal amount of the gel medium from Faber-Castell Design Memory Craft. And this is just a scrap piece of a uh, tool that was on my desk and a hymnal page that was on my desk. I scour garage sales and things for old books to use for ephemera on all of my layouts and cards. And I stumbled across a church garage sale at 
a uh, one time and bought some damaged hymnals and that's where I get the hymnal pages from this is just a piece of canvas that was uh, laying on my desk as well and they just make really interesting backgrounds this is an old Polaroid from an old pink paisley collection um, that I've had in my stash for a while so I'm just gonna flip it around and use the back side of it to uh, create a photo mat. Again, I'm using that Harlequin and I'm going to take a Versa ink pad and just stamp right onto that. And then using the C'est la vie cerise uh, embossing powder. And then and once it's heat set, I'm going back over the top of it again with the raspberry lemonade from the uh, on the boardwalk collection so as you can see these two collections go really super well together uh, they, they complement each other very well now I'm just taking a tag and I'm spritzing it with a little bonjour, bonjour butter and for those of you out there who are French pardon my uh, southern hick French uh, pronunciation I really I apologize uh, so this is one of the canvas resists butterflies from Prima it's been in my stash for a while so I've uh, spritzed it up with a little bit of that tilt wheel teal and I've also taken an old Prima clock and added a little gesso to it and uh, that's going to get used as well now the f flower that is there uh, on my desk was one piece that was just left over from a collection that, of Prima collection from ages ago I can't even remember the name of it but I encourage you when you're building out these little flower clusters like this uh, find a uh, some little one hit wonders on your desk and by adding a little bit of gesso to them and then spritzing them with your Lindy stamp gang you can make them all kind of come together and work together in one layout and uh, it's really fun to see how it all works out so here what I've done is I've taken a little bit of that raspberry lemonade spritzed it into my gesso and now I'm painting it onto that flower just to tone it down and help it blend really well with the rest of the layout and I'm adding gel medium to the back of all of these elements to glue them down. And uh, I'm going to use this tag for my journaling area. So I want to make sure I keep plenty of it exposed. But again, gel medium to just glue it down. Um, I'm not even sure why I use this uh, 17. This is one of the Tim Holtz uh, number plaques. And again, I'm not even really sure why I did that except for the birthday party was on October the 7th. So I think I was really sort of just playing off that 7 there. As you know, those those come in a... a um, limited number selection but it was on my desk and it was a metal piece so I threw it in there uh, and as you can see whenever I start uh, playing around I'm gonna cover up those numbers anyway so here I'm trying to find placement for my butterfly uh, I just love these little canvas resist uh, pieces uh, the clock was just a little too brown still so I'm adding a little more gesso to the top of it and again this gesso is from Faber Castell design memory craft I'm just liberally painting it on here and when you do this it's going to send all of these colors sort of to the background and help to mute them down just a little bit so to color up my uh, metal piece I just pulled out some of the Ranger alcohol ink in aqua and I'm just drizzling that over the clock and over the uh, little metal piece there and what's left on my palette there on my desk I'm just using a paintbrush to add a little splatters here and there I felt like this needed to be just the transition was just a little too rough so I've taken a doily and that's going to help to soften it up some and then I've added a piece of white cardstock to the back of my frame I'm not ready to add my photograph yet but this will help my eye to not be so confused by all the chaos below the frame uh, and, and it's just a temporary thing for the moment now I'm going to pull out that Harlequin uh, stencil one more time and I'm going to add a little bit of this purple the pop rock purple back over the top of some of these elements that I've glued down this is going to kind of help everything to to come together and work together nicely as if it were all from the same paper collection even though none of the items that that I'm using today uh, really came from a collection 
uh, and I love how uh, this is making it my own and making it very unique. So again, just splattering a few more pieces of purple here and there. I'm really struggling to stay out of that white space. Uh, as you can tell, I'm kind of creeping into this this space over on the left. But at this point, I think I've I've honored that commitment to stay away. So now I've just grabbed out a journaling pen, and a, I do not have one of these, but Lamore's Lamore has a journaling pen in the store that I will link up down below. Uh, it does not bleed and it does a really nice job at coloring over all of these elements. Uh, the pen that I'm using today, I'm not sure I recommend you using it because you have to be very careful. It may bleed. Um, it says it's waterproof, but I don't trust it. So I'm just going to outline around the edges of my layout. And since this one is such a watercolory type, uh, layout if it does happen to bleed a little I'm gonna be okay with it so uh, now I'm just gonna go around and trace some of these harlequins just to kind of bring them up to the front a little bit and give them a little more presence and I also traced around all of my uh, hearts so uh, now I found this old rub-on set in my stash and if you don't have these rub-ons you could definitely freehand this but I wanted my layout to have a doodled effect to it and these uh, particular rub-ons were perfect they say dream in this moment forever and uh, so that's what I'm going to do is rub those on and they have a really nice uh, handwriting or hand-drawn look to them uh, they're old I mean when I say old I'm talking maybe 2003 2004 I recently uh, moved into a new room and so I have found a lot of my old products just stuffed in drawers or whatever and I vow to use them up uh, so that's what this is about but again you could definitely freehand these if you did not have the rub-ons um, or look through your stash um, perhaps you have some old rub-ons laying around somewhere so now I'm going to journal over on the right on my um, on my uh, tag I had this fear that I was going to end up covering up the area with some of my um, embellishment so I wanted to make sure I went ahead and got that journaling in first so now I've decided I need a couple of more embellishments to go on the left hand side it just seemed a little out of balance so I'm just taking some scrap paper and I'm following with all of the colors that I've already used the bonjour butter pop rock purple and tilt to wheel teal and then this is the raspberry lemonade and I'm just uh, I don't really know what I'm going to do at this point and some of these pieces are not going to get used but I wanted to see if I could make some sort of element to, to put over on that left hand side so with the bonjour butter is the winner here and again I splattered it with some of the tilt wheel teal and now I'm going to heat emboss over the top of that with uh, some of the Chateau Ro Chateau Rose uh, embossing powder and the Harlequin uh, imagery so uh, it will actually mimic the style that is going on in the background of my layout and just kind of help to bring it more towards the front this is giving my layout a really nice carnival feel which is what the look I was going for so I've repeated that same step with the smaller flag just using the uh, teal to wheel teal and then the bonjour butter embossing powder on top and then to uh, keep with the outlining I'm going to go around and outline a few of the harlequins later so now I have taken a we are memory keepers file folder tab punch and cut out a, just a tab and I'm spritzing it with the bonjour butter and I'm going to heat set that really well and that's going to serve as a placeholder for my date so I'm going to uh, go ahead and, and write the date on that and then it's going to go up above the uh, layout or where the photograph is going to be so it just kind of helps to hide some of the script that's found on the um, hymnal page and it gives another punch of that that yellow you can see the yellow now in the groups of thirds you've got it to the left the right and at the top now here's my photo it's my niece uh, Adeline and it's on her birthday she's wearing a crown and I thought the crown uh, has like this harlequin look to it so I thought the harlequins would look really well with this crown so now that all of the flags that I've created are dry I can go in with my uh, pen, pen and just outline a couple of those harlequins on those pieces of paper as well so then I decided that the 
a tab that's there on the Polaroid needed to have um, a little bit of lace for an added dimension. So I have a piece of Prima lace here that uh, I just cut down. And then I have a bunch of these uh, centers from Prima. These are uh, satin crystal centers. Uh, so uh, I'm just going to scatter those around. I put one in the middle of the butterfly, one on the edge of the tab for the tag, and then one on the on the ribbon there. And I decided I needed a third heart. So I had a chipboard heart in my stash. Uh, these are from... Um, these hearts are from Meyer Road. So I'm just going to uh, add a little of the Versa ink on it and then the, using the Chateau Rose so that it matches uh, the other hearts on the page. I'm just going to heat emboss that. And again, um, it, it's just going to add another piece of texture but still keep with the same color theme. And I like that it's smaller than the other two. So to keep with the same theme, I'm just going to outline around the edges of it uh, so that it keeps that look that the other two have. Now I'm going to use a, some foam adhesive to just adhere that down and it's going to go just above the flower and fill in that negative space on the photograph. Don't be afraid to actually add elements to your photographs. Uh, now, before I glue this down, I, I found these uh, little flowers. They're old school Prima, like old school Prima. But they have that bubblegum pop color palette like I'm using here for everything else. So I thought they would be really soft and delicate. So I'm going to add them to my embellishment cluster. So I'm just going to build it out going from the top and then staying out of the bottom area. Um, I'm, and some of these I'm breaking off and using them individually. Uh, I thought they kind of looked like they were, what uh, are those dandelions that you blow in the wind and, and, and they kind of float out around. So I didn't want to keep them all tight. I wanted some of them to actually look free floating. And they do help to soften up the layout just a little bit and give a little more of a feminine element to uh, the clusters. So again, just keeping with this theme of 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 staying in the cross, I'm just gonna build my embellishment cluster straight down. And I really love how, where this is going. It's very feminine, um, and it and it's it, you have to know the personality of Adeline. She's just kind of all over the place and whimsical. So this layout really fits her personality. I'm using my Prima tool to distress the edges, and now I'm going to uh, back this uh, layout to a piece of just um, cardstock that's a nice teal color, and it's going to help for my teal to come up. Now, everything's so messy that I decided I didn't want to apply my uh, layout to the cardstock straight. So I did make it crooked on purpose. And now I am just uh, following along the edges with my pen and I'm making sure that as I do this, I am kind of squiggling back and forth so it's not a straight line. Again, a straight line would have been boring with all of this chaos. <laughs> so I really wanted to keep with that whimsical feel. And I'm doubling up this line so that it has just a little bit more weight and uh, interest. And when I go around the edges, uh, you'll see in the close-ups that I just kind of did a little loop-de-loop -loop in the edges. And now I'm going to come back in here and add a few more details to these embellishment clusters, making sure that they're all covered with a, with a really nice black line around them. And I noticed that I didn't do this to the tag, so I went ahead and added it to the tag as well. And now I'm going to come back and add it to the top of my um, flags that I created. Uh, I couldn't do it before because I think they were just a little too wet, and they needed to be completely dry in order for me to be able to draw on them. And then again, I'm going to come over the top of this uh, file folder as well. If you, if you want your layouts to have a really nice whimsical look, I highly recommend going over them with a black pen because it really the outline really gives them that, that nice bit of whimsy. So now I'm going to take the uh, Rugged Edge stamp from Lemore Weber 
Designs in Indigo Blue, and I'm adding a Faber-Castell Design Memory Craft Stampers Big Brush Artist Pen. Uh, I'm just painting up a little small section, and then I'm going to stamp it around. And to me, this looks very similar to as if I had stitched on this layout. So all I'm doing now is taking the edges where they weren't quite meeting where my lines were, and, and just drawing them back into the lines so it looks like it all kind of came together at one time. Uh, like I like almost like I had stitched it with the sewing machine. So then I decided I needed a, a little bit more text. So I'm taking the Faber Castell Design Memory Craft Stampers Big Brush Artist Pen in the cold gray I230, and I'm stamping with it with the Lemore Weber Circles script, and I'm just going to stamp that script around my embellishment cluster, and it's just going to kind of give a little bit more texture back there and a little more interest to the background itself. And again, it it it's sort of um, going on somewhat wet, so it's it's looking a little smeared, but I really love the look of that. It it really to me it just added a little depth to my uh, layout uh, and a little grunge. So um, you'll see it in the close-ups. I really love the way it looked on this layout. And by using the light gray, it's not so in the foreground like the black would be. So now I'm going to take just a small bit of gesso, and this is one of Tim Holtz's crowns, and it's a nice pewter color, but it's still a little bit too bright for me, and since she's wearing a crown, I thought it would be a nice little touch on my layout, so I'm using, <clears throat> excuse me, the gesso to uh, tone it down just a little, and now I'm going to add it there above her name, Addie. Since um, she's wearing a crown, I thought the crown sort of fit that princess look and uh, carried off over her name there. So now I am going to add a few sequins because what's a party without a little confetti, right? So what I'm going to do here is I'm using my quick stick. Um, I'm applying hot glue, but I'm allowing the hot glue to somewhat solidify before adding the sequins. This will keep them somewhat elevated and uh, and keeps them from melting with the hot glue. If I had used matte medium, it would have just sealed them straight to the bottom, and I wanted them to have a little depth. Uh, and now be careful if you do this because they do get hot since they are made of mylar. So that's why I'm using my little quick stick there to apply them. And notice that I'm doing it in thirds. I did it at the base of my embellishment cluster at all three points. So, and then I'm adding three in each grouping as well. So it, it really adds that pop of sparkle that I needed. Now I just happened to find this little rose in, on my desk and again it's one of the little Prima roses. Um, one hit wonder it was just in that stash of things that needed to be used. So I'm going to see if I can't find a way to make it work with my layout. And uh, don't be afraid to take these flowers and open them up if they're too tight. Um, I decided to abandon it for now, but I'll add it in just a second. I put a, a little one of those centers there in the center of that um, clock, trim down that uh, stem just a bit, add some gesso to the top of the flower so that it works with the rest of the flower clusters. And then now when I add it, it will look like it's just kind of the tip of that embellishment cluster. And I absolutely love it. And then I went back and sprayed it. Um, maybe a little later I will, uh, but I sprayed it with the uh, Chateau Rose um, Flat Fabio, and there it is. Isn't it gorgeous? I mean, just look at all these little tiny details and the texture from the heart with the whip spackle. Um, so anyway, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. Don't forget, I will put a link to all of the products uh, that I used in a blog post, and that blog post will be there linked in the description box below. I will also put a link to Lamore's store so that you can purchase uh, some of these great products that I uh, used today in this layout. If you enjoyed this uh, production, please make sure you leave me a comment and share it with a friend. Don't forget that thumbs up. That lets YouTube know you like this uh, video and this channel. So thanks again for watching and please uh, let me know if you have any questions.